Hello everybody, I'm Storm here. Welcome back to Final Fantasy XI Online. In the last episode, we were kind of coming together and trying to get all of our ducks in a row as far as what we're going to be doing about Bahamut and the Keeper of the Apocalypse and the ancient capital of Alteu. Still got a lot of questions about what's all going on and all of that, but things are coming to a bit of a head. Um, we came to Selbina here to get the last verse of Memoro de los Tono, a song that will supposedly open the gates to paradise. So, we now should know what that is, and we know also that Eshenotarl is Cardinal Mildarian. So, stuff's coming along. And actually, we are heading into what were some of the harder battles back in when this originally came out in the game. And so we're going to see how we're going to do uh, with that. I should be able to get through them with my level 80 Ranger, but if they give me any trouble at all, I'm going to go and switch over to Dragoon and crush them. So we'll see. Oh, and we also showed getting an avatar, but that was kind of a, a side business. Alright, well, let's get back to it. So, we want to head over to the Metalworks and talk to Sid real quick. All right. seen here. Ah, Tuna, where have you been? I heard about what happened, but I still can't believe it. Learning Preach was really the key to the apocalypse knocked me off my chair. Uh, but finding out that the Genoan official, Eshenotarl, is actually Cardinal Mildarian, and that she's been alive for the past 10,000 years, uh, that was like having an anvil dropped on my head. Yes, because she's immortal now. Uh, Tuna, I want to want to hear what happened with you too. Call on all the others. Hmm. So that's what happened. To fulfill the pact that Bahamut and Celtus made over ten thousand years ago, Mildarian has been attempting to revive Divine Promethea. And the magicite embedded in Preach's bosom was only sealed, was only a sealed, crystallized form of her inner emptiness. We sin hunters have committed a grave sin ourselves in not being able to stay calm and focused in the presence of the magicite. Not a single complaint, not a single cry for help, all that time carrying a terrible burden alone. What about Olmia? Uh, she has known Priest since she was a child. She watched her silently struggle. Uh, these new truths must be as painful for her as they were are for Priest. They could not wish such a terrible fate upon even an enemy. So, what are we to do now? Phoenix has told me that we are not to provoke Bahamut any further. However, the biggest threat to mankind is the Worm King's aerial magic. If we could defeat him, it would better our chances for victory against the Worm Armies. And so we are left with three choices. We can let Destiny run its course and wait for Bahamut and his minions to destroy us. We can use my airship and to join the Juno Armada and fight the Worm King. Or we can recite the fifth verse of the Memoro de los Tono and call 
the Twilight God down on Deprish. Twilight God, he cursed mankind, made us fight. If we defeat him, the curse will be broken. But do we have the power? We said Tuna had that power, and we have the Phoenix on our side, but I am not sure that that is enough. Diablos, ruler of dreams, warned that no single child of Vanadil could vanquish the Keeper of the Apocalypse. And still, my blade remains silent. Yeah, we are about to walk down a very dangerous path. But I think it will be wise to wait until Priest returns before you take any action. Uh, Tenzin, uh, Miss Sin Hunters, Tuna. Uh, hurry to have Nazi away for Preach. When she arrives, contact me and I will fly to the archipelago in my airship. Have Nazia, but why would you travel there? Help from Gilgamesh should be arriving at the safe hold shortly. Let's just say the pa the parts they'll be transporting are very sensitive. I'll see you all to Sea Lion's Den. Alright. So, off to Tavnazia. Alright, Tavnazian safe, or Tavnazia, Tavnazian safe hold, home point two is where we want to go. So we want to head to Sea Lion's Den. Sid's airship and Sid. And Tenzin. Master Sid, we have been waiting for your arrival. I brought Olmia and Louverance with me, but I'm sorry to say that Preesh couldn't make it. There's a bit of bit of a problem. A problem? What do you mean? Olmia, would you be so kind as to fill Tenzin in on the details? I have some business with Gilgamesh. Uh, Gilgamesh's little helpers. We... We couldn't find Preesh. I fear that she is hiding somewhere on one of the Armada's warships. That cannot be possible. Why did Lady Preesh not wait for you to return? She's not planning to attack the Worm King, is she? She... Does her own thing, pretty much. I think Preesh knows that we would follow her. Preesh can read the hearts of others. She knows what we feel and what we think. She knows what I feel. Why does she continue on if she knows that her decisions will only hurt me? Why does believing hurt so? Even when two hearts are connected, there are times when pain can't be avoided. When the world is overwhelmed with sadness, the only way to resolve the pain is to change the world. Hmm. Perhaps you're right, Jabos. Perhaps the only option left to mankind is to change Vanadil. For the past 10,000 years, the Vanadil has grown and evolved and become what it is today, a world bound by the chains of an evil deity. Preesh is uh, set out on her own in an attempt to change that world, our world. 
Hey, you guys ready? I finished loading my baby up with my secret with the secret weapons, and it's time we moved out. There's no time to lose. I'm gonna hitch a ride back to Bastok on Gilgamesh's boat and let the president in on what's going on. Even if you are successful in stopping Bahamut, there is no knowing what his worm army might do. The Republic has to be prepared for the worst. Sid, thank you so very much for all that you've done. Yeah. You know, uh, if I were only a few years younger, I'd be up there with you guys, but my place is back in Bastok. Gilgamesh made sure I didn't forget that. And don't you forget that you're going up there to save your nations too. So, to save all of Vanadil. Your lives will be on the line, but I know you'll be alright. As long as you're flying my Sid, nothing can go wrong. Ah, <laughs> uh, Master Sid, I ask that you allow me to fly her. She's all yours. Now, get out there. Where's the crystal? Yes, let's us be off. Bahamut and Preesh are waiting for your arrival. All right. So, we're off to go save the day. All right. Where am I going? What am I doing? All right. We click on the iron gate and we should get another cutscene. Do you think there is any chance to catch up with Lady Preesh? According to Aldo, the Juno Armada departed the duchy after splitting into two units. The main unit will enter Cape Reverne directly by air and attempt to draw the worms from the floating islands. At the same time, the remaining unit will attempt to approach Bahamut from the opposite direction. Hmm. I assume that Preesh would be with the latter. However, that unit cannot begin its operation until the main unit has successfully drawn the attention of the other worms. Engineer Sid said the same thing. This means we still have time. Oh, look who I found hiding below decks. Get your hands off me, you pointy-eared brute. Uh, let us go or you'll all be doomed. Yeah, we're your secret weapon. Secret weapon? You wouldn't happen to be the same secret weapon that Sid received from Gilgamesh, would you? We've given up the fame and glory of being high-class Genoan officers and decided to become high-class pirates. The highest of the high and the classiest of the class. Yes, sirree. Mm, dots. Mm, we'll be making contact with the Armada shortly. But maybe it may be our advantage to have someone on oh on board to communicate with them. The Juno Armada. We're being fired upon. Warning shots? That scary Elbon went to the communications room. Shouldn't we be going to the communications room? I say we go to the communications room. We should go as well, Tuna. We must try to convince them that we are here to help. Alright. 
And then we check the gate again, and we go to the battlefield of one to be feared. Alright, I think that we actually have to check the door. Let's move to the Armada Warship. Yep, let's go. Tuna, the attack seems to have subsided. Something is going on over there. Something is wrong. I wonder if they discover where Preach was hiding. Uh, Lubrons is moving the ship into position so he can board their vessel. Let us hurry below decks. If you can hear me, give us a sign. We've come to help. We mean no, har no harm. We are simply trying to find our companion. You're wasting your breath, Samurai Man. Yeah, they can't hear you. They're just puppets made by those crazy scientists in Juno. Puppets? Alright, get my trusts out. Let's open the festivities. All right, I gotta actually physically attack them to get Valina all in on this. Oh, my camera's bumping up against a cannon. Alright, just pick one of them. are blasting me right now. It's not too bad right at the moment. Someone is healing them. Now oh, you're taking damage. Is Barrage ready? No, Barrage is not ready. Okay. Another one down. Weapon skill can pretty much wreck him in one shot. That's good.
No barrage is not ready yet. All right, got through that one. All right, still look good. So we need to move on to the second stage of the fights. Move on to the next warship. Reesh, are you okay? If you can hear us, respond. And if you can't hear us, respond. Oh, hello there. Could you be inside that thing? It's dinner? Well, that would explain why she couldn't hear us. Okay, it's Omega. Let's get shadows up. And fire. If we're going to have any issues, it's going to be with... With this. The thing is, this thing like stuns constantly. But we got through it pretty quickly. Also, its attack speed increases as it loses health, and if you're doing this at a level appropriate, it gets pretty nasty. All right, and then we move on to the next warship. What's going on? If we continue like this, both sides will end up exhausted without having made any progress. Look. Oh, something's going on over there. I will attempt to pull our ship up alongside there. Hold on. Another one of these things. And it's Preach. You dirty rat. Why don't you come down here and fight like a man? Ah, you. Nagbalata. The wonderful exhibition about to unfold will buy me more than enough time. My pet is still far from completion, however, when she is finished, she will be the most powerful creation Venadil has ever seen. Though those created 10,000 years ago may still be residing somewhere within the celestial capital of Alteo. And here we are. Reesh. Huh? Hey guys! 
Oh man, what's everybody doing here? Oh. Ah, yet not another distraction. At least now I can test my pet in extreme battle mode. Ultimate weapon, show our friends what you can do. So your ultimate weapon. All right. This thing can do a pretty nasty AOE. Hopefully it won't cause me trouble. All right, get everybody engaged and I'm backing off. Get within appropriate firing distance. There's a lot of different potential attacks it can do. Skill. Probably don't want to be in front of it. My barrage ready? No, 20 seconds. Ooh, that missed me. I still have shadows. Okay, good. That one landed. All right, barrage is ready. And my weapon skills in ready. We're doing pretty well. And we got through it. Excellent. And it conveniently falls off of the airship. All right. Uh, I guess I can't expect too much from a prototype. Ah, uh, what do you think you're trying to do, Nagmalada? You're relieved from your position within the Armathron Society and banished from Juno. How dare you step over the boundaries of the amnesty you are granted and bring that creation aboard an armada vessel. Did you think that by performing this service it would take you back? Or was this cause of turmoil simply a desperate attempt to interfere with our plan, an attempt born from hate and despair, a despisal? Despise? This Or perhaps you came to ask Bahamut the way to Alteo. Nagmalada, I understand why you seek the path of the celestial capital. We who have lost the whisper of the soul are forced to live alone, trapped within our own wretched solitude. However, that is our path to freedom. We are children born from one. Now our children and our children's children step out into the ever-expanding world. 
This is much like when the Mother Crystal split into five pieces long, long ago. We were simply ready to leave the nest before the Zillart. And why did you choose to abandon your people and hide away in the Chamber of Eventide? Why did you join the Zillart in blocking the path to Alteo? That is... By entering the chamber, you succeeded in washing away the darkness of your soul. It is why I seek the capital, so I can remove the darkness from my soul, so I can be free. Huh? Oh. If you want to go to Alteo so bad, then why don't you just go to, to Movopolos? Reesh? The boy Celtus has already asked the Moblins to open the gate to the capital. If you follow him, he'll lead you right to the fifth crystal. I see. If it has been buried or submerged, there is no place the Moblins cannot find. I was beginning to wonder when I was going to be able to see the boy once again. I have unfinished business with him. I've told you what you want to know. Now get out of here. As much as I'd like to, it would be improper for me not to return the favor. The favor bestowed upon the Kulu over 10,000 years ago. Return the favor? A surprise attack? There's Bahamut. <laughs> I see my song has reached the conqueror of the skies. I am Kulu. My strength comes from the protection of the terrestrial avatars. Without you, I am powerless. The Zillart, those who have sworn revenge against Vanadil, to you I offer these traitors as a sacrifice. You are nothing but a raving mani maniac, Nagmalata. You are far from being one of us. Your pitiful soul drowns in darkness. And that is why I must cleanse it. I will find, find Alteo I, and use the Chamber of Eventide. It's all over. It's over easy. What are we talking about? This is where it gets interesting. Bahamut, conquer the sky, uh, conquer the skies, king of the worms. I am Preesh. I am the keeper of the apocalypse. Your pact with Celtus left me trapped for thousands of years. This magicite is nothing but another form of the emptiness. It was born from the same place I was. We are one and the same. Uh, my friends and I have come to call forth and destroy the emptiness and its maker, Promathia. We will do it right here, right now. We will fulfill the pact. Watch as we show you the children of the dawn's true power. So this is what you meant, Eshinataro. There is no need for you to prove anything, young Elvon, for you are not the keeper. Surprise. Not the keeper, but Eshinataro, children of Altana and Phoenix. I commend you on what you are attempting to do for the people of Anadil, and that is why I will tell you this. The true keeper of the apocalypse li lies in the celestial capital of Alteu. Within that soul lies an immense amount of darkness. For 10,000 years it has slept, but now it has awoken. And I'll tell you. Who was it that restarted the crystal line? Remnants of the Zillart? The children of Altana? 
does not matter. For now, the power within the final crystal, the crystal that holds Alteo in balance, has begun to fade. It will not be long before the celestial capital has fallen to Vanadiel. When this occurs, the key of the apocalypse will arise and envelop all life. And finally, the twilight god Promathia will use his almighty power to begin his eternal reign. That is why I have come, to stop the seeds of man from being wiped from Vanadiel. There is nothing for the keeper to... If there is nothing for the Keeper to envelop, then Promathia will not have the strength to enter our realm. Nothing to envelop? So that is why you plan to attack. Damn, and you call yourself a Guardian of Vanadil? Why didn't you tell us what you are going to do a long time ago? If you would have been honest with us, we could have been in Alteo wiping the, that Keeper's butt last week. He is right, Lord Bahamut. Such intolerant behavior does not befit the conqueror of the skies. Why do you not believe in the power of the children of the dawn? Why must I believe in something that does not exist? You cannot defeat the Twilight God, and you will not even be allowed to approach him. Celtus proved to us 10,000 years ago. Well, that to us 10,000 years ago. Destruction is your destiny. You cannot escape what has already been decided. There... There is still a way. Bahamut, we need not fight Promathia if we can stop the Keeper of the Apocalypse. Siltus told us... Uh, told us this. That is why he has returned. He is here to stop Alteo from falling back to this dimension. Impossible. Siltus does not have the power to... I'm sick of all this talk. Doesn't anybody here think we can handle the situation? Do you know? You tell him. You know we can kick his bloody butt all the way into next Water's Day. You bet. You, you. Damn you, Celtus. I will not let you harm Vanadil and her children like you did once before. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this. Tuna, get out of the way. Everyone, abandon ship. Phoenix. Will you return to the Mother Crystal along with so many other lives? I understand. Your sacrifice has brought, has brought us a sliver of time. Let me release you for your journey to the Mother Crystal. Open the path in preparation for her. Chapter 7, The Light of the Crystal. Are we laying there passed out? Yep, we're laying there passed out in Lufay's Meadows again. He's been getting robbed this time. 
Ah, look who it is. Let's see now. You find a Dougal Guard's ring. Yeah. Ugh. Are we alive? Are we breathing? Ugh. You. It's Tuna, the one who angered Bahamut. Run. Flee. Exit stage left. All right. All right, we now need to go enter the Tavnazian safe hold. A little bit of a quick chocobo ride. I mean, theoretically, it would actually be faster to use my warp ring and then grab a home point and teleport. But I'll take a chocobo ride. All right. I guess I'll pause and I'll be back once we're near the safe hold. All right, we're almost there. Preach. You know, where the hell have you been? You were knocked out again? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Everyone else is okay, though we uh, thought we were all goners for a second there, though. By the way, did you figure out what happened? Uh, Tenzin's sword saved our butts. He released all the power of Phoenix and it shielded us from Bahamut's Mega Flare. Did she keep the dragon keep his dragonness quiet for a while. I guess this puts us at a, whatchamacallit, a deadlock. You know what, Tuna? The living thing is a real drag sometimes, huh? If it means I get to save the world and everything, I'm not that afraid to die, you know. But it does look like that won't be happening. There's a way to save Benadiel without me kicking the bucket. Nothing simple, but there is a way. There's always been someone in every age who never gave up, always found a way. I mean, even living with Prometheus' curse, people have survived. That's why I want you to keep on fighting, keep on living. Kind of like having you around. <laughs> Enough of this sappy talk. It's time to get moving, Tuna. Next stop, the celestial capital of Alteo. There's nothing that there's another keeper of the apocalypse that needs a taste of knuckle of a knuckle sandwich. I'll appreciate. Everyone's here in Tavnazia. Round them up and move them out to the port. All right. And where did I just go? Not anywhere where I want to be. I missed my turn. That's what happened.
Okay, so we need to head um, downstairs. to Sea Lion's Den. Easy. You know, it's just as Pre said, you didn't fall from the airship after all. Are you worried? Tell us. Oh, and, and Jabos, yeah. Are you worried? Tell us where you are hurt. Think carefully. Wounds of the spirit can escape your notice. And they are much more dangerous in physical cuts and bruises. If you are wounded, this moblin medicine can help. Denzin said he was fine as well, but he needs medicine as much as you. Do you realize what happened back there? It was your actions that angered the Worm King Bahamut. The rift between dragons and people is deep. There was no reasoning with him. If we could only harness the strength of the sleeping gods, we could approach Bahamut on equal footing. You know, tell Tenzin to return to town before Sid's airship arrives. I want to leave as soon as possible. All right. Now I should be able to go and examine the entrance to um, Fumiuna Aqueducts. Louverons. Lady Tuna, I'm glad to see you in good health. That gets turned off. Okay. Your words landed us in a serious predicament, but at least we have made a safe return. However, if I were in Bahamut skin, I would be most unwilling to forgive our recent actions. It would be in the best interest of the residents here if we were to leave as soon as possible. Speaking of which, have you seen our good friend Tenzin? Rumors have reached me that he has left the safe hold alone, unable to bear the loss of the power of in his blade. I am unclear on the properties of the weapon, uh, but I am sure it is considered a national treasure in the Far East. Tenzin saved our lives with that sacrifice. We have already expressed our gratitude, but I believe you have yet to speak with him since the incident. Without an airship, we cannot leave this island. If Tenzin is nowhere to be found in the town, perhaps he set out for the Mizuro coast? All right, now we need to go up to the top floor. Yeah. 
And then we need to examine... I think it's this door here. Tuna, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. After all the excitement, I lost consciousness. I'm afraid I have little idea of what went on. But my ears still ring from that terrible battle cry, and this, my soul cringes from that heart-rending whisper. That was the last you'll ever hear from the Great Phoenix. While the other terrestrial avatars were forever f um, flitting beyond our reach, the Fiery Phoenix was always by our side. Along with Tenzin, she gave us her strength and courage. She guarded us, well, she guided us along our path. Is Tenzin all right? He laughed at all, he laughed it off as an inevitable occurrence, but I am terribly worried for him. I'm a bit worried about the samurai guy myself. He closed himself off to everyone. Who knows what he's really thinking? Those warrior types are good at uh, hiding their true feelings. I hope it's nothing serious. You know, please, if you can reach through the barrier that Tenzin has built against us. You're a best shot, Tuna. It looks like Tenzin has skipped out of Tavnazia, and I don't like this little chill that's running up my spine. Okay, well, I think that's where we're going to go ahead and stop for today. So we will move on. And start making our way towards Alteu. Soon, I think. All right. Well, for now, we'll stop here. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.